how to turn a stranger into home. One, recite their name like it's your favorite poem. Sing it like it's your favorite song. Let it roll off your tongue and onto your bed. Immerse yourself in their entire being until you know the rhythm of their heart better than your own. Two, how your heart feels when you look at the night sky. How your heart feels when you are okay, when you are safe. Name that feeling after them. Three, memorize the color of their eyes. Memorize that color and then give in to the knot that forms in your stomach, the wave that comes over you when you see it. Give in every time. Soak in it, sink into it, hold your breath. Four, lean into their touch. Tattoo their fingerprints on your skin. Let their love and their hurt, every single piece of them stain you. Five, grow with them. Plant yourself beside them and mimic the way they turn towards the sun. Become entangled in them and don't flinch. Don't flinch when they get tangled in you. Wait until the day when you can't tell which roots are yours. Six. Wait, wait until the day when you don't remember the pain. Wait until you have forgotten what it means to be alone. The first time I ever performed that poem titled How to Turn a Stranger into Home, which just like, side note, by the way, is not something I would recommend you do. Don't make someone your home, it's not healthy. Um, the first time I performed that poem was the first time I ever performed any poem. It was my freshman year here at Andrews during freshman orientation week, and I felt lost. I have always been someone who is hyper aware of who I am and what that means for how I fit into the world around me. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am 20 years old. I am a poet, as Anton said. I am a woman. I am black. And I am not well off financially. <laughs> All of those things, plus so many other things about myself, have the potential to determine how much of a say I get within certain groups or communities. So like I said, when I came to Andrews, I felt lost. I felt like I did not belong here. I felt like this was not a place where someone like me would get a say. Unfortunately, I had yet to encounter people whose passions and identities I identified with thrive in this environment. But then one night, thank God, all of that changed. It was a Wednesday evening, it was during freshman orientation week, and there was this thing happening called The Nest. The Nest is an open mic, and in the orientation week schedule, it referred to The Nest as a creative arts cafe. <laughs> the description was something like, uh, it was like, come out and enjoy the artistic vibe and open mic performances. Um, when I read that, I got hype because even though I was lost and 18 years old and didn't really know anything, one thing that I did know was that I loved artistic vibes and also food, which like when I read the word cafe, I just like, associated that with food, so I was like, bet, like, let's go. So I went to the nest, I went out on the grass in front of James White Library, and I sat there, and I was shocked. Because I saw all of these people get up at a microphone and share a piece of who they were. I saw people rapping and singing and playing instruments, and I saw the audience, this incoming freshman class that I was a part of, listening. This was like mind-blowing to me because for the first time, I was like, wow, Andrews is a school that cares about its students' creative expression. <laughs> so I was sitting there enjoying all these performances, and then all of a sudden, it was like something flipped because in the midst of all this good music, someone went up and did a poem. And then all of a sudden, my mindset 
went from, oh, yeah, like Andrews cares about its students' creative expression to, wow, Andrews cares about my form of creative expression. So one thing led to another. I don't really know how, but somehow I ended up being the last performer that night at that nest, that freshman orientation week. I remember I was like so scared and I grabbed my phone, walked up to the microphone. I had that poem, How to Turn a Stranger into Home. And I probably said something like, hi, my name's Anna and I've never done this before. And then I read my poem and to my surprise, people listened. Now I'm a junior here at Andrews and I have performed poetry on just about every stage this campus has. I'm the president and co-founder with my friend Anton of our university's poetry club, The Sound. The Sound hosts open mics and writing workshops and poetry slams. We just had one last Saturday. And I have had the privilege of witnessing the growth of what I believe is only a portion of this campus's incredible poetic talent. So if you couldn't tell like from everything I've talked about so far, um, I am obsessed with poetry. I just love it more than anything in the whole world. Um, and all my friends who know me know that not only am I obsessed with poetry, I'm also obsessed with creating spaces for people to share poetry. Whenever people ask why I care so much about this, why I'm so passionate about spoken word poetry, I think of a quote by Sarah Kay, who is one of my favorite poets. She talks about poetry being an accessible form of art, and she says, spoken word teaches that if you have the ability to express yourself and the courage to present those stories and opinions, you could be rewarded with a room full of your peers or your community willing to listen. Now, I believe that this reward is less about the applause or snaps that you might receive at the end of a poem and more about the understanding you walk away with after each performance, the understanding that your voice matters, that your story, your experience, and your truth are important. My experience at The Nest my freshman year taught me that sometimes all it takes to feel a little less lost, to feel like you are accepted and that you belong is to have your voice be heard. And I believe that God calls each of us to help someone else's voice be heard, especially those who have been oppressed and marginalized and forced to go through so much of their struggle in silence. So I have a question for all of you. Now my question is this, who is it that is struggling in silence and what can you do to change that? How can you use your gifts and your passions to help someone's voice be heard and not to speak for them, but to instead create a space where they feel safe to share their story? Who is it that is suffering in silence? Maybe it is someone from a different generation. Maybe it's someone of a different race, ethnicity, or cultural background. Maybe it's someone of a different religion or someone with a different sexual orientation. Who is it that is suffering in silence? Maybe it's a stranger in your environment, whether that's your college campus or your city or your country. Maybe it's a friend who has a mental illness. Maybe it's a classmate with a disability. Who is it that is suffering in silence? The one thing that has stuck with me more than anything since I started doing poetry here at Andrews is that after almost every event that the sound hosts, Someone comes up to me, it doesn't matter if it's a poetry slam or an open mic or a writing workshop, someone always comes up to me and thanks me for creating a space where their voice is heard. A space where they feel safe and welcome to share who they are and what they are passionate about. A space where they do not feel dismissed or belittled or silenced, but instead feel encouraged and welcome and accepted. I want to challenge you to take God's call for each of our lives to love each other and to foster community very seriously. 
It doesn't have to be through poetry. You could organize an open mic, or maybe it's in the way you place your vote, or maybe it's just giving a listening ear to someone who needs it. I don't know what it is for you, but I urge you to actively seek ways that you can use your gifts and your passion to show someone else God's grace and the intrinsic value that they have in Him. For so many who are suffering in silence, for so many who feel lost, for so many whose circumstances and background determine how much of a say they get, what will you do to make sure that their voice has a home? Thank you.